I have spoken to nearly every sheep farmer in the state of Vermont, searching for the elusive, purebred white merino sheep. Not brown, not black, white. Merino wool is common. You see it on sweater tags in nearly every department store in America. But that's imported merino. For the much rarer American merino wool, you have to go to Vermont and you have to talk to Judith Gusto. I am one of these people who thinks that merinos are the Rolls Royce of wool sheep. And why anybody would want to raise something else is beyond me. We came here looking for sheep and then we found Oliver. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Oh, it's Oliver! Stop it! Merino wool sells for $10 a pound. Oliver's fur sells for $10 an ounce. Oh my. In the mid 1800s, this part of Vermont was the mecca of merino wool. At one point, there were even more sheep in the state than people. That's thanks to Thomas Jefferson and his diplomat friend, William Jarvis. He brought 4,000 merinos from Spain to Wethersfield, Vermont, about an hour south of Judith's farm. Then the Civil War happens. And what happens then is the South turns around and puts an embargo on cotton coming to the North. All of a sudden, sheep are very important. And Vermonters had the sheep. So the price of wool goes up again. After the war is over, the market starts to fail again. So then those animals are shipped off to the West, to Ohio, and to Australia. That's where your merino sweater is probably sourced from, Australia. The once booming American merino industry is now in the hands of a few purists. I can't imagine life without large animals and what they give to me. Oh, here comes somebody who wants to give me something. All right, are we good? You get the feeling that they know why you're here and can appreciate the interaction that you have with them. It's an entirely different mindset when you're buying something and setting. I met the sheep who did it. I met the woman who died it. 